And so the pinnacle of Muslim success was to take over Granada in Spain, which they were eventually outed from, but this area that's known as Spain and Portugal today was once known as the Iberian Peninsula, and the word Iberian comes from the word Ibri in the Hebrew language, which is Hebrew in Hebrew. And so we know that the Hebrews were there, not only that, the Muslims, and also the Sephardic Jews. And these three people groups all came from the southern part of ancient Israel. There were the people that were in Judea, who were the genuine Hebrews, and also to the south were the Edomites, who became known as the Udameans when they moved into Judea, and also the Ishmaelites, who became the Arabs. And Saudi Arabia today is really Esau Arabia, or Esau Arabia, named after the Ishmaelites, who are the Arabs, and the Edomites, who are the Jews. And so let's have a look now at Spain and the Sephardic Jews. How many people really realize what happened within the Jewish community in mm. Spain in 1492? Well, this is a mystery that God has kept for a long time. Because we've said that Columbus, Christopher Columbus, is from Italy. No, he's from Portugal. No, he's from Spain. Well, where is he really from? Well, they say that he was from Genoa, uh, Italy, but his Italian writing is horrible. But his Castilian is perfect, you know. So, mm, you know, so be it as it may, recently uh, there is a, a, a growth, a, a, an exponential growth of discoveries that point to the fact that Christopher Columbus, first of all, his name is not Columbus. His name, and not because I'm Hispanic with Sanchez surname and Martinez and so forth, mm -hmm. but his name is Colon. And so in Spanish we have it right, Cristobal Colon. So his real name is Salvador Zarco, all right? But now recently we've discovered that Christopher Columbus, Cristobal Colon, was known as a quote-unquote Marrano. Mm. Marrano? Mm -hmm. The Marranos are those that were forced to convert to Roman Catholicism that were Sephardim, and then they were forced to eat pork, uh, which is very unkosher, and then they were called marrano, pigs, mm. swine. Because you see the, the facade of the Spanish Inquisition. What is Inquisition? It comes from the root word to inquire. Mm -hmm. But this was more than inquiring. This was uh, spying and forcing Jews to convert to Roman Catholicism. So what's happening during this time is that it's not so much the facade of, of, of religion yeah. to force people to convert, it was greed. It's because the crown, the King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella are going broke. They're exploring all over the mm -hmm. place, wars all over the place, they need money, yes. all right? So who's got the money? Who are the financiers? Who are the ones that are so wealthy in Spain and later Portugal, well, the Sephardim, the Jews, okay. So as early as 1391, there was a major diaspora, meaning scattering, because of the oppression, tortures, burnings at the stake of the Jews before and after conversion. The story of the slaves in America begins with Christopher Columbus. His voyage to America was not financed by Queen Isabella but by Louis de Santiago, who advanced the sum of 17,000 ducats, about 5,000 pounds today, equal to 50,000 pounds, to finance the voyage, which began on August 3, 1492. Columbus was accompanied by five Moranos, Jews who had forsworn their religion and supposedly became Catholics. Louis de Torre, interpreter, Marco, the surgeon, Bamal, the physician, Alonso de la Calle, and Gabriel Sanchez. The reference is The International Jew by Henry Ford. Gabriel Sanchez, abetted by the other four Jews, sold Columbus on the idea of capturing 500 Indians and selling them as slaves in Seville, Spain, which was done. Columbus did not receive any of the money from the sale of the slaves, but he became the victim of a conspiracy fostered by Bamal, the ship's doctor. He, Columbus, suffered injustice and imprisonment as his reward, betrayed by the five Moranos, or Jews, whom he had trusted and helped. This, ironically, was the beginning of slavery in the Americas. 
The source is Adventures of an African Slaver, published in 1928, page 11. The Jews were expelled from Spain on August 2, 1492, and from Portugal in 1497. Many of these Jews immigrated to Holland, where they set up the Dutch West Indies Company to exploit the New World. In 1654, the first Jew, Jacob Bar Simpson, immigrated from Holland to New Amsterdam, or New York. And in the next decade, many more followed him, settling along the East Coast, principally in New Amsterdam and Newport, Rhode Island. They were prevented by ordinances issued by Governor Peter Stuyvesant from engaging in the domestic economy, so they quickly discovered that the territory inhabited by the Indians would be a fertile field. There were no laws preventing the Jews from trading with the Indians. The first Jew to begin trading with the Indians was Hyman Levy, who imported cheap glass beads, textiles, earrings, armbands, and other cheap adornments from Holland, which were traded for valuable fur pelts. Hyman Levy was soon joined by Jews Nicholas Lowe and Joseph Simon. Lowe conceived the idea of trading rum and whiskey to the Indians and set up a distillery in Newport, where these two liquors were produced. Within a short time, there were 22 distilleries in Newport, all of them owned by Jews, manufacturing and distributing fire water. The story of the debauching of the Indians with its resultant massacres of the early settlers is a dramatic story in itself. It is essential to comprehend the seaport of Newport. It is important in order to recognize the Jewish share in the slave commerce. There was a period when it was commonly referred to as, quote, the Jewish Newport World Center of Slave Commerce, unquote. Altogether at this time, there were, in North America, six Jewish communities, Newport, Charleston, New York, Philadelphia, Richmond, and Savannah. There were also many other Jews, scattered over the entire East Coast. Although New York held first place in the settlers of Jews in North America, Newport held second place. New York was also the main source of kosher meat, supplying the North American settlements, then the West Indies, and also South America. Now Newport took over. Newport also became the great trade harbor of the East Coast of North America. There, vessels from other ports met to exchange commodities. Newport, as previously mentioned, represented the foremost place in the commerce of rum, whiskey, and liquor dealings. And to include, it finally became the main center of slave dealings. It was from this port that the ships left on their way across the ocean to gather their black human cargo and then derive great sums of money in exchange for them. An authentic contemporary report based on authority indicates that of 128 slave ships, for instance, unloaded in Charleston within one year, their cargo. 120 of these were undersigned by Jews, from Newport and Charleston by their own name. About the rest of them, one can surmise, although they were entered as Boston, Norfolk, and Baltimore. Their real owners were similarly the Jewish slave dealers from Newport and Charleston. One is able to assess the Jewish share in the entire dealings of Newport if one considers the undertaking of a lone Jew, Portuguese Aaron Lopez who plays an important part in the overall story of the Jews and slavery. Concerning the entire commerce of the colonies and the later state of Rhode Island, which included Newport, bills of lading, concessions, receipts, and port clearances carried the signature name of Jew Aaron Lopez. This also took place during the years 1726 to 1774. He had, therefore, more than 50% of all dealings under his personal control, for almost 50 years. And another famous Murano Jew was Ignatius Loyola, who in 1540 began the Order of the Jesuits within the Catholic Church. And so this was a military order of monks, and they also did these strange mystical spiritual exercises.